So we're going to jump into the challenge. So the challenge here is everybody get into a demo account because this is a practice. This is a purely going to be for practice. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to put a layer of buys and a layer of sells on. So a layer is going to consist of four trades of small trades, right? So it doesn't really matter the quantity size. It What matters is that it's the same. So let's start, let's just go small. You know, you guys can do 0.01s if you want, whatever the fact is. The point is the principle of how to fix your trades without getting into fix it mode. So the reason why we're putting on a layer of buys and a layer of sells is because one of them is gonna turn into a loss and one of them is gonna win. We wanna hold on to the one that is a loss and close out of the one that's a win and then fix that loss. And so what I'm looking for is for at least a loss of another action point. So let's go ahead and put buys and sells on right now. And if it sells, if it if it crosses here, we'll get out of our cells. If it crosses, oh, excuse me. Yeah, if it crosses here, we'll get out of our cells for money. And if it crosses here, um, we'll get out of our buys. Uh, we'll get out of our buys. And so it should, our cells should turn in. So what we're trying to do is purposely take, get into a losing situation on a layer. So at least four trades. So whatever you do normally in a layer. So if it's three, if it's four, if it's five, whatever you do normally, when you put a layer on, that's what we're doing. So we're getting into a layer buys, we're getting into a layer cells. We're going to peel off the one that becomes profit of at least, of at least five pips in this market condition. Um, and then we're going to fix the losers of a le of five pips with another layer stack. So does that, does everybody have um, that challenge down? So we're going to fix our trades through adjusting them, not through f just peeling them off. So in order for you to take a trade off, um, you need to have adjusted that trade or find profit opportunities. So kind of exactly what I'm into right now, but I think this is a great challenge because if you, that honestly, just going back for me, the moment that I knew how to fix my trades and adjust my trades was the moment that gave me confidence um, as a trader. So does everybody have any questions on that challenge? Okay, good. Because this is a good challenge. This is a really, really good challenge. So the next question is, who is going to be the brave soul um, that's going to show us how they're going to do it and talk through it? And then I'll help you. If you want my help, I'll help. If not, that's fine, too, because this is a tougher challenge. So this is what I call a level two wobble technique. So those of you guys who do pass that challenge and post it to the challenge board, um, anybody that fixes that, make sure you tag that as a level two um, wobble technique. All right, because we just got that pop up, this is a be a great place to enter into buys and sells. Um, just for see if we get another pop up. And in order for me to fix my trades, I've got to go a little heavier on this layer right here for a pullback of 50%. All right, so I'm not showing my screen because I don't want to give away the challenge. I don't want to show you guys how to do it. I want somebody else to show how they're doing it. So if anybody is brave and show the screen, if not, I'm going to have to pick on Khalid. I mean, thank you. Thank you for being. Um, all right. So Khalid, this is what, if you want my help, <clears throat> I'll help you. If not, if you just want to take control and kind of explain what you're doing, what you're looking at, how you're going to do it, how you're going to accomplish this challenge, um, even better, right? Mm -hmm. So can can, do, can you talk or no? Yeah. If you can't talk, then I'll have to just be the commentator. All right. What are you looking at doing, guys? <laughs> Okay, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Thank you. All right. Okay, let me get used to that thing. Okay, well, I started early. As soon as you said what the challenge the was, challenge. I took four 
eyes and four cells right around here. Uh, I took a layer of four, both of them. Okay. And uh, then uh, when you said once we cross over here, we close the eyes, I did for a profit. So I'm done with, with the eyes. And now I'm just left with the cells to, uh, to fix. Come back. Yeah, to fix the cell. So as soon as it was going up, I was, I sold again here and I sold here uh, in order to take profit and uh, <clears throat> and close some of the, uh, basically my worst is $2.25. Uh, I can do one for one. And technically, I'm about at profit right now, technically I could just close all and and I am at profit. I already fixed those uh, those uh, those uh, um, cells, so I can just put uh, all trades, and I should end up with profit, which which I am. I have like twelve bucks of profit with that, and so this is this is what what I did. Uh, I started here. I uh, went up, closed all the, the buy at profit, and then started to sell and sell again. So that's what I was doing. I, it was fairly easy in this time. Uh, so. so did you, so you're showing us how you passed the challenge. Um, right, right. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, can you show us live or like just to do it again? And let's go uh, through it. What I like to do is just have it live. Yeah. We're actually showing people the 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 mechanics of going through it. Yeah, so, like, like right here, we seem to be at a at a you know at a point where it could go either way. Like there is a lot of yep of support and resistance here. Absolutely. So. I could go for for same thing, just do a layer of four, make sure my vol volume is correct, and just uh, just just buy four and sell four. That's and I, I sold it. Just let everybody know. For me, on my I just got a reset to zero, and I was able to break even off of this move right here. So. Um, I, what I did really quick is once I saw this, um, I stacked into a heavier layer. As soon as it came down and stalled right here, I just closed out of everything for a break even situation, got my reset to zero. Mm -hmm. Um, and so th this is kind of what you have to do sometimes is like, you just have to ride it out, wait for it, get into a heavier layer. Cause I had to take trades off that were you know, down here. Really, I had some trades down here, but because of this heavy layer right here, um, and I was never in heavy as far as total position size because I kept it light all day long. But this, I had a 3x layer, so I had a heavy layer here, and um, all it had to do is run down to here to get me to break even. And that's the principle that I'm trying to teach now. You cannot do any of this you cannot even withstand this move at against you if you don't start out light and so that's the brilliant of the technique is that you can withstand this move against you waiting for just a little bit of a pullback once you get it you can get that reset to zero break even and fix all of your trades um that way and so that's the advantage of starting out light because at some point it's going to go against you. All right. I just wanted to circle back to that. Now I'm looking for as you're trading, talk through it. And I, and I don't have any trades on right now. So if you want help, I can help you. If not, I'd love to see kind of how you do it. Yeah. I mean, for, for this challenge, uh, the way you described it. So for me, if it goes above this line here, I will close my, long so i am i stay with loss for the yes. short. and if it if it crosses this point i you know close 
the shorts and stay with the longs. Right. So the key is not necessarily using your buying and selling. The, to, uh, uh, you can't use your one side's going to be profitable and one side's going to be a, taking a loss. Right. So the challenge starts as soon as you peel off the side that's profitable. Now you got to fix your losses. Does that make sense? So you can't use right. your profit ones right now to fix the ones that are in, in losing because that wouldn't. That's not what the challenge is. Right. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, probably once it, it it seems to be going up. So probably once it crosses this point, I'll just say that the uh, <clears throat> the buys we have about eight pips. Technically, I could. I could set them up to eight pips. The buys, the longs, I could set them up to eight pips from now, which means from here to there, it would be like three pips. Five now. Okay, I just said take profit. So once it crosses that line, I'm out of longs if if it does that. Good. Uh, let's see. Anybody else um into either a fix it anybody into fixing their trades right now? Um anybody past the challenge? So just kind of comment if you guys have passed the challenge and or where you're at in the challenge. Just kind of checking in with everybody. Dad, how are you doing? Are you taking the challenge or are you still? Yeah, I am. Uh, okay, I've, um, I had to go to the rest gym when it went up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I did take a little profit on my buys. Now I've got my uh, sells. Uh, I have some in a loss and and I put more at the top. So brought my break even line up closer to me. Uh, I'm almost ready to break even. Good on the challenge. Yeah. How'd you do in, in uh, did you trade live today? Yeah, I traded live. Yeah. You're not doing the challenge in live though, right? No, I'm doing a challenge with demo right now. Okay, good. This again, this is a technique that that I would continue to practice over and over, guys. Um, because you're never gonna get the same opportunities twice, meaning that in order to fix your trades, you got to find um, like what I just did up here was I went double. Sometimes you have to go double if not triple on a later stack. But guess what? If you do that and it goes against you, no. um, then so you got to make sure that you're picking your opportunities, meaning, you know, what I was looking at on on here. Kali, can you just zoom out just really quick on the one? zoom out so what i was looking at right here was that it came up kind of had this where it kind of pushed up and again i was looking at this as an another possibility of an exhaustion bar didn't happen here but it was looking like this one and so i got in heavy here on this one and i got in heavy here right um and so because i got in heavy here and here um and it came down and gave me a little bit of profit on this layer that was heavy, it totally negated all my losses down here because I had basically two heavy layers on. Um, and I wrote it all the way down to here. And so that got me out. Now you don't usually, I mean, not, not going to say usually, um, a lot of times that happens, but um, I was definitely looking to get out of this layer because or lighten this layer's position and the market just gave me that. And so it played this exhaustion bar right there um, for that opportunity. Now, that's what I did on this turn, but I did not expect that to happen um, where it was just going to continue to run all the way up. Um, and so um, because it happened, I took advantage of it. So learning how you're going to get different scenarios every single time you trade. So like the scenario right this second, 
you got to ask yourself, do I think it's going to bounce right here? If it's going to bounce and you're in a fix it situation, well, maybe you could get into some buys right here for a bounce of here, take a little bit of profit off and then come back down and test that high and then use the money here to fix your cells, right? And so there's to there's a bunch of different ways, but what you're doing, anytime you're in kind of an adjustment, I don't wanna say fix it because we're not in a fix it, but anytime you're looking to adjust a layer so that you can get out, you're, you're, you're immediately changing your bias, your personal bias, not market bias, and you're hunting for money opportunities, whether that's up or whether it's down, it doesn't matter. You're looking for quick hits um, on buys or sells to just put money in the bank so that you can peel off. If, if you're nursing sells and you take a buy opportunity, you make money in the bank and then you turn around and sell here and you make money in the bank here to come down to here and that's where you close out, right? And I, I love this move. This move happens all the time. So there's, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that, a lot of different ways. And so that's why I think this challenge is really, really important to kind of practice, to nail down and to continue to do that even after today's challenge. Continue to get into a demo account, get yourself into a losing situation, fix the trades on purpose, get confident, in learning that technique because there's there's so many variables but there's so many opportunities to fix your trades and if you can see both buy and sell opportunities it's going to be better for you and i promise you that when you guys get this that get this down when you guys get this down you'll be a better trader not only in not only in practice but also in confidence it will increase your confidence to know that i can fix my trades Makes sense. Okay, so it hit, uh, hit the long, so now I'm on in shorts. And technically, I would start uh, selling here okay. to <clears throat> take advantage of, you know, a pullback and make some profit. Um, I'm not going to go heavy yet. You know, I'll go heavy at this line here for sales. Now, I want to be careful about that, though, just real quick, because um, we did technically come up and we had a first test, right? And yeah. so anytime we have a second test or a third test of this high, so if it comes up and tests this again, um, I, I don't know if I'd go heavy. This is the opportunity. This is the high probability opportunity is always on the first test when it's a second test or a third test depending on where we're at in the price cycle so if we're at the end of a price cycle i would probably play that bounce but if we're in the middle of so if it comes up here and decides to consolidate and it it could break on that third attempt so just want to be careful um because to me this is where i'm trading light um and I want to, in case we do get a breakout to the top, again, market, you know, all week long, it's been pushing higher. So the trend, the long-term trend is to push higher. So you just want to be careful of don't want to necessarily play the heavy up against a major break. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that makes you a lot of sense. You don't want to get caught into a, a situation where, um, where you go heavy and then all of a sudden it breaks and runs for 20 pips. Yeah, that, that right. makes a lot of sense because right now it looks like it's creating an M, like a mm -hmm. double pop. Yes. Yeah. Right now I'm at profit, I technically could close all and, and, and be out. So because I am a profit, so for the, for the challenge, I'm just going to close. Okay. Out, so I'm done with the challenge. I kept the arrows showing up, uh, yeah. so that you know you see what we did uh, for the sake of this um, exercise. During the weekend, I was playing with the uh, support and resistance line. If you guys have a minute, 
I can show you something. Absolutely. I love everything you've been doing. I love. I, I'm, I'm not done with that. I'm just playing. You're with just it. playing. You're just testing. So. Uh, yeah. So the experts here, let me go on to my. I have to be able to access my downloads. Anybody else complete the challenge? Just care of curiosity, throw it up in there in the um, chat if you guys are done. Now, the, the next time I do this, um, I may get you a little deeper in. So fixing one layer is easy, right? And so if you're going to practice this on your own, I would say try and get into a couple layers, taking a loss on a couple layers and then fixing that, like, and, and a deeper loss of so something that maybe you've struggled with. And I can't, obviously, I can't tell you what that is, but if it's like, you know, every time start identifying where um and honestly this helped me a ton and start identifying where your when your trades break down like where and typically when the market does this i struggle right and then find a way to practice that to turn that strength or that weakness into a strength right and so for me um it's like a marching market i struggle Right. And so during the summer, when you have a lot of marching markets, I started adding that belay trade on, started testing that and started demo testing that. Um, then I started adding um, the zero take profits. Right. Um, and started trading that way. And so there's things that whatever you need to do to fix where you can start identifying when trades go bad. Right. When 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 my trading starts to turn is usually when the market does this. We'll start back testing, start figuring it out and start throwing things on and different techniques that you can utilize. Yeah. All right. Khalid, you ready to teach us something? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I um, I started playing with the support and resistance line just to basically figure out where the action points are. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I uh, I built a script for this to basically you could go and divide your screen or uh, your chart into um, uh, lines of support and resistance. Let's say 16 maximum. I do, I do 16, and how far back you want to do the search. Um, you can you can do. You know, 25, you can do 50, you can do 100. This will take a little bit to work to calculate. Mm -hmm. And I update every five minutes. Uh, so you don't want to calculate that every every minute. Right. And um, you can show, uh, you can show the action arrows or you can just, um, uh, if, if you want to consider wicks or just the close and, and open close uh, levels, or you also want to you know, use the wicks as also points of uh, uh, oh, contact, um, just run it. And it takes a little bit to run. Because um, it's measuring everything, right? Yeah, it goes as far back as it should go as far back as 1600. Uh, here, this is a junk line it's just for me because I haven't, uh, you know, I need to see if it's working or not. What sure. It's doing. Um, but this line will go away, uh, you know, when I share it with, with you guys. So, it, what it does, it, uh, it takes, it calculates the lines, the best fit for the most contacts. So I think now we did the calculation, the no calculation. And um, like, you, you know, this is this is line two, uh, z, you know, line zero is the most contact that if you see the line zero, I, I could highlight it that this is line zero. But like where, where I am now, this line has the most contact points between wicks and close and so on. 
Right. So that's a, it's a good solid action. Right. Plan. Like line one, uh, this is one. So these two lines have uh, going back 1600 uh, pairs of candles. Bars. Bars, yeah. Bars. Yeah. This, this have, these two has the most. And um, I've just colored the, the lines right above and below the, uh, the, the price. The price. The blue, and I put an arrow there. This arrow is intended to indicate like an action point. Right. So what, what your theory is that you're trying to prove out is like, where's our action points? Which ones are heavier? Like if you go across 1600 bars, where the points that actually is touched multiple touches gives you different colored lines. So they kind of like, hey, this might be a heavier action point versus something that's not has multiple touches might not be as strong of a support line. Is that kind right. of where you're going right. with this? Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the main thing is just you see where your support and resistance, like your supports are mm -hmm. those red lines, uh, and your resistance are the yellow. So once once the price goes above here, you know the this one will be red again. It becomes support. Um, the only I, I love it for for experienced traders. The only thing I don't love about indicators in general and is that sometimes if you're a new trader and i would rather have you be able to identify this without assistance does that make sense because it's so key to i think learning and so learning where those action points are learning where support and resistance is is key and so this if this helps you to do that great but you should be able to do that without assistance. But I love it. So such as uh, the, your break even line that you have on here. Absolutely love it. Right. But even if, if I didn't have it, I still should know as a trader where that is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Same with support and resistance lines. I don't want to, the, the thing I don't like about indicators is it teaches traders to rely on the indicators. Does that make sense? And so I would much rather rely on price action and the feel of the market than saying, well, this indicator told me to buy, so I bought, right? And that's a tendency that new traders have when they're looking at indicators is like, again, doing, again, Kali, this is nothing to do with you. Just, just like I'm scouring the internet, finding what is the most popular videos that people are looking at in the trading industry. And indicators are are huge. Like your MACD, you know, your um, your uh, is is really popular. The HMA, EMA, all these things are are awesome as tools. But how much should you rely on them, and how much should you just rely on on pure price action? I'm a pure price action trader, so I rely on that. However, if I'm measuring, like if I'm good measuring to set it and forget it type trade, then yeah, I'm going to use these tools. I'm going to use these support lines, and I'm going to use all every anything at my disposal that I can utilize and make me a better trader. I'm all for it. But when you rely on it. That's when I think the issue comes into play. Does that make sense, Khalid? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't tell you to buy or sell. Right. And you can turn them off, you, you know, like, like I just turned the lines off. You don't see them anymore. Sure. Uh, but you see, like I, I left the arrows, which, which shows that, you know, it's going up. Now there's a price action. There's something you need to do, basically, if it reaches that you know, second level up or second level down. So here's kind of our second test of that high. Um, it's at the end of a price cycle. So I wouldn't trust it to break, but I wouldn't trust it to to not to to come all the way down either. I'd probably trust it to come down, touch this, which is probably, and then if it's going to break this, um, I look into maybe getting into some buys right here for another test because if we get that third test we could break we could run and if it breaks runs you could turn this into instead of a wobble situation you could start riding the wave a couple of you guys um over the weekend or on friday um emailed me uh, or dm me and said that you had a um said that writing 
you learned how to kind of ride the wave and that's what you guys did on Friday and you guys were able to gobble up a lot of profits. So that's awesome. I love hearing, love, love, love hearing kind of like success stories when you guys start getting those aha moments. So, so thank you guys for, for sending those, those in. And I love it. Um, the, the only thing that I would say would be better is a set of email and me throw that up in the, in the discord on the testimonial, um, stuff and kind of, I want to build kind of like a wall of kind of calling it like a wall of glory. And the only reason why I'm calling it that is because, um, that's what Sean and I had come up with a long time ago. Like we wanted to kind of, kind of had this vision of like, not just, not just Sean or me or anybody else showing you like, this is awesome. This is how you trade, but we want to actually have you guys show, um, your successes, your wins. Right. I mean, ultimately it's not how good of a trader Sean is or how good of a trader I am. It's how good of a trader we can make you guys. And so that's what I honestly get excited the most is when I see you guys have these awesome aha moments, you guys awesome start crushing it. Like Josh mentioned last week, um, that, you know, before he started trading with me, he started, he was trading, he was looking for smaller, um, profits during the day. Like he'd, you'd end correct me if I'm wrong, but if you would stop sooner and your mind has been a little bit expanded by, hey, I can go for more and be confident and be able to fix that. And so that's to me is something that I just love when you make comments like that. Right. Um, you did say it was harder at first, um, but you worked your way through it and it should be right. Anything that's worth it shouldn't be easy. Right. It should be work and effort. And that's what trading is. You can't just pick it up in one day and, and be done. Right. So Khalid, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love anybody else um, that completed the challenge. It'll look like Remy. Awesome. Plus 64 pips, 64 and a half. 